Now when you have various types of memories, it doesn't mean that entire information is present in all the memories, right? So only a subset of uh, information which is present in higher capacity memory will be present in lower capacity memory. What I mean to say is, if you have a CPU here, uh, let's say there is cache here and compared to cache, main memory will be bigger and compared to main memory, secondary memory will be bigger. Therefore, entire information which is present in the computer system can be present in the secondary memory, but then only a part of this one will be present in this. The reason is, you cannot obviously place everything that is present in secondary memory in the main memory because the size is obviously different isn't it now whatever is present in the main memory may not be completely be present in the cache only a part of it will be present depending on what is the size of the cache right so only a part of it will be present here right okay now that is the, that is uh, where we are going to have these access times and all so whenever we are going to let's say if you are searching for some memory, some item, let's say one byte, and if that byte is not here, then you are supposed to go to this and again get into this and again get it. So that is where we are going to use the access times of various levels and find out the overall access time. Okay, we shall see it later. And now, if the processor refers to ith level memory and is found, then it is called hit. Otherwise, it is called miss. Right. So what I mean to say is, if you are trying to search for a item in this cache, for a byte in this cache, if it is present in this in this cache, then it is called as hit. If it is not present, then it is called as miss. Right. And sometimes we'll also talk about it as hit rate or hit ratio and miss rate or miss ratio. So what is hit rate or hit ratio is, let us say hit rate. So what is hit rate is, if you ask for 100 times for some word in a level, how many times we are able to find it in that level, that is called as hit rate. Then what is miss rate is, if you ask for 100 times for an item or a word in a level, how many times it is not present, right? So which is nothing but 100 minus x by 100, got it? See out of 100 times if you are asking for 100 times if you are able to find the word x times what does it mean 100 minus x times you are not able to find it therefore what will be this this will be equal to 100 by 100 is 1 1 minus x by 100 therefore if this is the hit rate then the miss rate is nothing but 1 minus hit rate are you getting this okay now there are two ways in which a processor is connected to various levels in the memory. Now we shall take an example where we have two levels of memory. Let us say this is L1 level and L2 level which means this can be cache and this can be main memory. But it can be extended to even many levels but here we are talking about only two levels. So one way of connecting the processor to these memories is all the levels may be simultaneously connected to the processor and whenever the processor wants some word, it will start looking into these uh, levels simultaneously. That is one case. And the other case is, whatever word you are, you are asking for, you will first ask for the L1. If it is not present in L1, you will go for the L2. Or if it is not present, you will go for L3, so on LN. This is one way of connecting it and this is the other way of connecting it. And both of them are equally possible. And which way they are they are you know connecting it they are, they are supposed to mention it in the question right if it is nothing is mentioned they go for this one right that is that is how generally we connect okay and now look at this if this is the processor and if you are connecting it this way which means both the levels of the memories are directly connected then what happens is when you ask for a word you will be searching for it both in L1 and L2 simultaneously right so assume that for this level the access time is t1 and the size of it is s1 and c1 is the cost per byte c1 is not the cost of the entire level 1 memory it is the cost per byte and h1 is the hit rate for the level l1 and similarly assume that for this level for the second level t2 is the access time and s2 is the size of it and c2 is the cost per byte of this level okay and here h2 is not required under these assumptions we can find out 
what is the average time required to access the memory and what is the average cost required to you know buy that memory okay so first now talk about what is the average time required to access the memory average time equal to in case if you are able to find it in level one then you will be taking less time the reason is okay one more assumption we are making is level one access time is less than level two access time right which means generally cache is faster compared to main memory right so in case if it is directly present in level one we'll stop the search there right therefore for all the searches out of 100 how many ever searches we are able to find in l1 the time for those searches will be t1 got it see now let us say what i mean to say is we shall see this here now assume that out of 100 times x times you are able to find a word in level 1 in this level 1 right then what will be the time required to get those words x into t1 right and what about the misses 100 minus x is the miss isn't it uh, and what happens in those misses you are supposed to get it from l you know the next level that is by t2 got it and both of them will be happening parallelly so whenever you start searching for a word you will be searching for the word both in l1 as well as l2 that is why whenever there is a miss you will be able to find it immediately at a time t1 and if there is a sorry whenever there is a hit you are able to get it if there is a miss you will be able to get from it without any delay right that is why t2 only got it so now this is the total access time for how many words for 100 words see out of 100 words x words you are able to find it in level 1 and 100 minus x words you are able to find it in level 2 and for whatever words you are able to find in level 1 your, your access time is t1 and for whatever words we are not able to find in level 1 your access time is t2 right and since we are starting the you know uh, searching parallelly you need not add t1 here got it in case if it is not in parallel which means for if it is not present in level 1 then only if you are going to level 2 then for all the 100 minus x words which are missing in level 1 the time would have been t1 plus t2 but since the axis is going on parallelly this is the expression right now what is the average for 100 you have to search for it isn't it now what will be the expression x by 100 into t1 plus 100 minus x by 100 into t2 which is nothing but h1 into t1 plus 1 minus h1 into t2 got it so that is how you got this one right and coming to the cost if you assume that for one byte this is the cost this is the cost per byte and this is the total size of the memory in bytes then what is the total size cost of this memory s1 into c1 right why because the units of this one is rupees let's say in rupees rupees per byte and the capacity let us say size is given in bytes then if you multiply them both you are going to get the cost in rupees right therefore s1 into c1 is going to give you the total cost of this memory and similarly s2 into c2 is going to give you the total cost of this memory right now what is the average cost average cost is cost of this one plus cost of this one divided by the total size that will give you the average cost of you know cost in rupees or something per byte are you getting this see now c1 into s1 is nothing but cost of the level l1 and c2 into L, s2 is nothing but the cost of the memory of this divided by s1 plus s2 is going to be the total cost divided by total capacity which is nothing but rupees per byte got it okay similarly if the memory would have been arranged this way anyway the average cost is same in both the expressions so we don't we do not worry about it now looking at the access type see depending on the way in which you connect the memories to the processor the average cost is going to change right so in this case what happens is the main difference is whenever a word is present in l1 we are directly going to get it in time t1 but if a word is not present in l1 the access time is going to be t1 plus t2 the reason is you have to first search l1 and decide that it is not present there and then only you are going to l2 right therefore here the time is going to be more 
right here this axis is in parallel but here the axis is not in parallel if it is present here then we get it from here if it is not present here we are going to get it from here right then what happens is then t average is going to be right at t1 h1 means if it is present here it is t1 if it is not present here 1 minus h1 t1 plus t2 got it so this is the average time in this case and this is the average time in this case so in most of the questions they will tell you how the processor is getting the words from the memory then you can get it directly otherwise you can assume this case and get the answer okay fine Hi. if you are planning to do masters then doing masters abroad is better than doing masters in india i'll give you all the reasons so first reason is out of one lakh students who take gate every year there are only 500 seats in old iits so all the iits put together have an acceptance rate of 0.5% and iits university is better than iits they have very good acceptance rate like 30% 40% but all the iits put together have an acceptance rate of 0.5% and if you are working hard to get into iit bombay iit bombay's ranking is 177 and IIT Roorkee's ranking is 400. If you are happy to get into IIT Roorkee, then getting into universities better than IIT Roorkee is easier compared to getting into IIT Roorkee. And looking at the salaries for computer science, of, uh, for software jobs, if you have done your masters in computer science in US, the salaries are ranging from 80 lakhs per year to 1.2 crore per year. So even if you take an average of 1 crore per year, your savings will be much higher than the salaries in India. After taxes and your cost of living, you can easily save 40 to 50 lakhs uh, per year. And in India, the maximum jobs that you get is around 30 lakhs. So your savings will be much greater than the salaries in India. And these are all the services that we provide. University shortlisting. So depending on your profile, we will shortlist what are the universities that you have to apply. And statement of purpose building and then LOR guidance and GRE and English test assistance and education loan assistance. So you don't have to have any collateral, which, which means without any security, now you can get education loan. Getting education loan is very simple these days. And whatever the amount fee, the amount of uh, fee that you have, you have a range of uh, universities. You can apply for 10 lakh universities, 20 lakh universities or 50 lakh universities. But whatever it is, you are going to get complete education loan and you can pay off your education loan in one year after you, getting a, after you get a job. And then we do visa assistance, mock visa interviews and then connecting with the university alumni. So now you might ask why we should join game of visas. So the answer is we have 90% success rate, 99% success rate. And these are all the destinations that we guide the students to. So we guide students to any country that you want to go. So now it is not just USA. We guide to UK, Germany, Australia, Canada. So we guide we guide students to all the countries. We work with all the destinations. And if you are interested in going abroad, you have to just drop us a message on this WhatsApp number 9494 Okay, thank you.